shifty work into the box. And the cross, it's in! Oh, it's LaRue! Welcome to Casual FC, an Angel City preview pod. I'm Mario Salazar, here on this crazy adventure with my pod partner, Angela Morales. Hey, everybody. If this is your first time here, which it is, that would make sense since this is our very first actual preview episode. Welcome. Glad you're here. Hope we give you enough information to make you come back. Perfect. So to kind of start it off on the last episode of Angel City... We're at BMO, and we faced the Chicago Red Stars. I believe, ended I up... believe they call it BMO. Oh, right. I'm sorry. BMO <laughs> Stadium. My bad. I'm still transitioning in my head from the bunk to BMO. Either way, we are funded by large banks. Yes. At <laughs> least this one's from Canada. Yes, exactly. <laughs> but we ended the game with a 1-2 to two loss. For the Red Stars, Ava Cook scored in the 16th and the 27th minute. And Sid the Kid in her epic, epic return that is so incredibly well-deserved and well-earned scored in the 88th minute with a sign of life. I mean, she came on and I'm just thinking, oh, please, dear baby Jesus, don't let her hurt herself again. She just came back. I know she's coming in for the last 20 minutes, but... Come on now. Come on. Don't don't be cruel, fate. <laughs> don't be cruel. Exactly. And if Yeah, it was very, very much Sid of old of I'm gonna come in and we are not losing this game on my watch. Yes. And if anybody is new to all of this, a good kind of primer as to her situation with Angel City is in that HBO documentary. We got her. We knew there was a ankle issue, but she was giving the thumbs up. Trainers gave the thumbs up. She played for two games, and then she was out. Yeah, nobody really knew the severity of that ankle injury. And as somebody who has a history of many, many an ankle injury that have caused many, many, many questions and have stumped doctors, it's a a time. (laughs) So I'm glad. I'm so glad she's back out on the pitch. My favorite part of that goal was her running into the goal, grabbing the ball. Going, let's go, let's go, let's effing go, and running back to the midfield. I mean, at like, you will not stop her. At eighty-eight minutes, there's not much time to 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 get that second goal. Come on, we, we, we okay. I think that leads us. <laughs> I think that leads us perfectly and seamlessly into our standings. As I've mentioned previously, maybe not in this pod, but if you go back and listen to our Who We Are pod, you'll learn that I am a hardcore casual. I may have used a different term, but casual fan. But I do love numbers, and I do love staring at the standings and stats and things like that. So let's check out where we are. All the teams in the NWSL have all played 10 matches so far. So that means we're all dead even on on points, as many points as we can get. And that leads us to, drumroll, 11th place. How many teams do we have in the NWSL? 12. Yes. And do you want to know why we're not 12th? Because why goal, is dif- that? goal differential. The Kansas City Current just happened to have two goals more scored on them than we have. A silver lining. Silver lining. In all of this. Silver lining in all of this. But that's really the only reason. Like at this point, you can just say we're tied for 12th. The goal in everybody's mind is playoffs just like any american good old american sport we don't care how you finish at the end of the season just care that you get into a playoff by chance and by dumb luck and our dumb luck needs to get us back up to sixth place which is currently the dash that's where we're at we in all honesty i think everybody knows even if you've just been casually watching that we need these three points please dear god we need these three points all I ask is for three points. All I ask is for one point. I think, think all of us are kind of praying to the soccer god. Like, please, we, one is good, three is ideal. Please. Like, let's just, let's get the momentum going. 
Yeah, as my daughter has a little book where Penny sings her song and she says one is nice, two is nice, three is even better. And that is correct. Yes, yes. that's absolutely correct. And the great thing about the NWSL that I've been learning and, and the last couple of years of, of watching is that with the number of teams playing, each game matters. Each game definitely matters. Honestly, it sounds bad that we're tied for 12th. We have nine points out of 10 games played. There are 22 matches in a season. And first place, Thorns, only have 19. So there's only a 10-point spread between first place and last place. And we're barely about to hit the halfway mark of the season. So there's a lot of movement that can still happen. So please, dear God, let's get these points. Since you're the stats man, as it stands right now, where are we, like, how far is ACFC from the cutoff? Like, if the playoffs were to start today, how many points would we be away from that that cutoff? If the playoffs started today, we are five points away. Oh. Uh, we... So that's way closer than I think most people realize. That's two wins, a win, and two draws. Like, that's that's doable that's at doable. this point. That's doable. It's very doable. That's the great thing is, you know... I know we've been having some some tough times this season. Tough times make for tough people, right? Yes, exactly. That's, that's how the saying goes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll take it, even if it doesn't go that way. I'm going to say, hopefully this all turns around. This gives him, you know what? I, yeah, I don't see things improving right away. I do hope that we get this World Cup bounce, you know, the kind of World Cup push Since there's going to be a break in the summer for the World Cup, a lot of our players are going to be in that. Hopefully they don't come bruised and battered back to us, but that'll give them the extra zhuzh to show that passion that they played for their national teams back onto the field. And hey, very true. five points away to tie the dash, six points to overtake them. There's only a 10-point spread between the top and bottom. Very doable. All of this, very doable. With that being said, let's talk about our next opponent. Alrighty. So our next opponent is the Washington Spirit out of Washington, D.C., not Washington State. Yes, that is Um, a very important (laughs) thing. I did not realize that first year. Yep. Or the, or also the, or also the OL rain being from Seattle, not from Orlando. Yes, that's that makes sense because I initially, when I first started paying attention to the league, I did the exact same thing. I was like, "Oh, Washington, that's Washington State," forgetting completely about the capital of this entire country that has sports teams. So, yep, <laughs> glad we were on the same page, and we have since learned. <laughs> yes, yes, I am educated now. So currently the Spirit are ranked fifth in goals scored per match at 1.3 goals. And they are currently ranked third when playing at home. So they're a tough team. You know, they're locked and loaded and ready to go when they're playing at home. They have a pretty good fan base. We're seeing record numbers of attendance kind of across the board right now in women's sports. And the end of new cell is not, you know, like they're not lagging in that at all every i feel like every couple days i get an update on some social media platform that's like oh this team has just broken their attendance record and now this team has and it's just it's awesome yep if you build it they will come a rising tide raises all boats or all ships exactly you know if we keep playing like this mm. hey have faith (laughs) i do have faith i I have it some somehow some way i'm still like we're gonna make the playoffs (laughs) yes we only got to get to six that's all we got to do exactly i'm a homer through and through that's (laughs) it may be a fault of mine but that's fine acfc has been on the road for three out of their last four matches two of those being regular season one of them being a challenge cup game we actually are are tied. tied Yes. yes, they're tired. They're tired of traveling. <laughs> That's for sure. Hopefully this little little bout of home 
home goodness they had over the weekend will will rejuvenate them enough to push through and and hold it down in Washington. For ACFC, we're currently tied for fifth with the Spirit in goals scored per match. Yeah. So if you uh, want me to break that down, that means yes. That means with the Spirit, I know we said they're ranked third at home this season, but they're also just ranked third overall. Uh, the Spirit have scored 13 goals in their 10 matches. So have Angel City. We have also scored 13 in our 10 matches. The problem is how many have gone in our own goal. The Spirit have only allowed nine, whereas we have allowed 19. And that's where it hurts. Yeah. I would like to Do they have like a uh, begrudgingly uh, Oh, I was, I was going to say I would like to begrudgingly thank the OL Reign for their, the majority of those goals and Portland. Oh jeez. <laughs> I mean, do they have like it's do they have a smaller goal than we do? Like is it's, is our goal bigger? Is that there's yes. more stuff going in. <laughs> exactly. Ours ours is a catch-all net at this point. No fault of Didi, honestly. It's just uh, it's been a tough go this season. It, it's a team effort. It's a team effort. Exactly. <laughs> Exactly. One of the interesting things is that the Spirit and Angel City have not drawn any of their last three matches against each other. So it's either win or lose. There is no draws, apparently, between Very Yoda these two teams. Yeah, the Spirit have won once this season, and Angel City swept the series last season with two wins, which is helpful in in our spirits. <laughs> yeah. And are you just going to gloss over the, the, the five attempts and five matches note that we've got? Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm just going to pretend that doesn't. <laughs> okay. If you want to put earmuffs on, I'll let everybody else know. Angel <laughs> City has not it. won any matches in our last five. And in our last five away games, we have not won. So, yeah. That contributes to our 19 goals scored and our nine points. It definitely does. But the good thing is we have Sid back, JJ, Julie Ertz. If you wonder why I call her JJ, her maiden name was Johnston. So she went by JJ for forever until she, she married Zachert. But I we have Sid back. JJ's there. We have a very strong defense. And even last season, given all the injuries, our back line was pretty great. I'm curious to see with this game how Sid and JJ influence the scoring capacity of the team because they are both a little ruthless in the best way, if that makes sense. Do you they want to win and they want to score? Do you happen to know if either of them are on the kind of long list for the World Cup for the women's national team? I think JJ might be. I don't think Sid is anymore. I, due to me finishing up my grad program, have not been uh, like ear to the ground for the national team news. I'm like still recovering from grad school. Now that I think about the schedule, I think during that in that World Cup break, we only have one match, and it's one of the Challenge Cup matches, which matters doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. It'll be it'll be good for the remainder of the team because we have. June Endo on the Japanese team, most likely. Claire Emsley, who has worn the armband, the captain's armband for Scotland. Alyssa, obviously, on our national team. And who knows what else? Everything gets crazy. Oh, duh, Allie Riley. I can't believe I forgot Cap. Like, my favorite player is also the captain of New Zealand's national team. <laughs> that was disgraceful. And one of the hosts. And one of the host countries, so... <laughs> exactly. That was disgraceful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cap. <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see how the team gels with those players gone. But the same goes for just about every every team in the league, which with uh, Washington Spirit, I will get into because they have a handful of national team candidates and players. I see. Okay. Yeah. Well, I... I, I want to say that with all of this it looks like angel city is getting a little bit better or or is that like a you know yes we're definitely showing signs of life in a really 
productive way. Like I said, Sid coming back, JJ on the field. We have Katie Johnson, who is just as much of a goal scorer as anyone else. We've got really good veteran brains for all of the newer players to pick. I think we're going in the right direction. Like this last game, the first 20, the last 20 were great. We just need the 50 in between. And we really need to put together an entire 90 minute show basically to really turn the season around. I think it's possible. We have all the pieces. It's just a matter of getting everyone on the same page coming out of the gates at a hundred miles an hour and just not giving up. Yep. Let's hope Freya gets on that same page too. Exactly. <laughs> One of the Dang, other. shots shots fired. Shots on fired. The first pod. Pew, pew. Yeah. <laughs> but definitely it is a question to see what the future of coaching will be on this team, which I'm sure we'll get into later this season as more rumors start to fly all around the internet as to what's happening with the team. One interesting matchup that I'm curious to see is the fact that this is Angel City's first game against Mark Parsons. He's a seasoned oh, he is a seasoned NWSL coach. He previously was with the Spirit, left the Spirit to go to Portland, was there for a few seasons. Obviously Portland is fantastic. They have had many championships in the last 10 years and now he is back with the Spirit who are coming off a 2021 championship so they have the momentum behind them to really like you know blow this thing out of the water but they're not quite all the way there yet it's going to be interesting to see this battle of the coaches then but with all of that coaches do what they do and they can only do so much during the actual game so who should i be watching out for who on Washington, should I be telling everybody, oh, watch watch that one, because it, it'll make me look good. First and foremost, Trinity freaking Rodman. She's number two. She's a forward. And honestly, she's kind of a goal-scoring machine. And yes, that last name might sound familiar to those of you who don't know. Her dad is Dennis Rodman of the Chicago Bulls, but they aren't super close, but Athletic ability definitely runs in her gene pool. She is currently the highest paid player in the league and was the first player to garner a $1 million contract for the NWSL, which is absolutely fantastic. Literally game changing. It's amazing. Um, Yeah. Wild. And honestly, she's worth it. She's a fantastic player. She was the 2021 rookie of the year. And she was also named that same year to the NWSL best nine. She's on the national team. She is fantastic last year when they faced us tyler lucy that's the game she switched positions and basically shut her down the whole game it was amazing to watch it was absolutely fantastic so if we can keep her off the ball keep her tied up we have a really good situation brewing i think ma is probably going to be the one or ma vignola i should say i think she's probably gonna be the one to match up with her due to her speed she kind of seems like a rocket (laughs) here and there coming out of nowhere ashley sanchez is one of their midfielders she is an assist machine a lot of people who are local to los angeles most likely have heard that name before she's a hometown kid she's from pasadena yeah she's from pasadena she played at ucla she's been on and off the national team roster She's tied her own record, team record for assists. Like, she's just solid. And the partnership you know you're that doing she and Trinity s- yeah, how have they put have. together. Mm-hmm. I'm going to say it's, that, that. It's scary. If if you're so good that the only way you can you can show that you're better is by beating your own record and being like, look, nobody right. else. Nobody <laughs> else around me. That that exactly. sounds a little scary. Yeah. It, I I have a lot of respect for position players who cause goals sometimes even more so than those who score like those who make the opportunities happen whether it's like Subert in women's basketball assist machine it's that kind of player because they're always looking for who's open who can get the ball in the net the hard part is it's also terrifying because she's she can get cut through a midfield cut through defense and just get where she needs to be and place the ball where she needs it 
One of her other targets is Ashley Hatch, who is also a forward, insanely good at scoring. She was a 2017 Rookie of the Year and the 2021 Golden Boot winner. As I said before, the Spirit were the 2021 champs. So all of this plays yeah. out in a way that makes a lot of sense. So you've got the Golden Boot winner with Ashley Hatch in 2021, mm-hmm. and you've got the Rookie of the Year in 2021. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. It makes sense why they won a championship. Yes, it does. <laughs> yeah, Ashley Hatch as well is on and off the national team. So is their team captain, midfielder Andy Sullivan. She's just an overall stellar player. Like, I, I don't know how to describe it. She's just exactly the player you want her to be in the midfield. She creates opportunities. She breaks up opposing offenses. She's just in it where she needs to be. So those are the four players that I really think that we as Angel City should be focusing on, focusing on shutting down and taking those opportunities away. But overall, I think it's going to be a really good show. Okay. So rapid fire. What number? Yes. Trinity. I got to look at, I gotta look at the, 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 the jerseys. Oh, yeah. Trinity is number two. All right. Ashley Sanchez. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley Sanchez. She is number 10. Ashley Hatch. Number 33. And Andy. They also, the Ashleys have different hair colors, so it's also easier to tell. <laughs> okay. And then Andy Sullivan. She is number 12. All right. So I've got 2, 10, 33, 12. I'm going to go buy a lotto ticket, too. I'm short numbers, but <laughs> it'll work. <laughs> we'll figure out. Just pick your, your favorite ACFC players to fill in those gaps. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So just as a, a quick recap, the history between the team. Last season, ACFC won at Audi Field, won nothing. And then we won at the bank, 2-1, to one, the bank slash BMO. It I, I don't it was know. the bank last year. It's still <laughs> yeah. it's still Le Bank this year. So. It's very much the way Staples Center is still Staples Center in my head, even though it's, it's not Crypto Center. Arena. <laughs> Crypt- crypto does exactly. not exist. That's that's silly. They can <laughs> ACFC can take their little crypto pixel things that that yeah, have, have you ever cast yours in? <laughs> no. Yeah. No. no, our NFTs. No, there we go. Sorry, that's what I was sorry, talking. Team Dad. Yeah, that's that's very much the influence of Team Dad, Alexis Ohanian. And yeah, 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 I feel like everybody's got mixed feelings on NFTs right now. But I do appreciate the fact that he is a fantastic supporter of women's sports. Oh yeah, granted, yeah, fantastic supporter. But he is Serena Williams' husband and Olympia's dad, so that makes sense. But it's it's really nice to see him being like, no, this is we need to put money in these things. Yeah. So you want to know some fun stuff that I was able to Google, and then maybe you can give me some more info on. Yeah, absolutely. So we've already established 2021 champs, but we beat them twice last year. Exactly. What happened there? So last year, or, oh, what happened there? You know, last season had a lot of sparks, and last season was was a lot of fun <laughs> so it was just us being better not them being bad that okay well maybe they weren't great last season <laughs> but there's there's kind of a reason for that the team the nwsl as a whole was going through a very tumultuous reveal of all of the bad things that happen yes that is true there's not a lot of regulation in the league. There's not a lot of collective bargaining amongst players and teams and players associations and all kinds of stuff. They were owned by a super not great owner and a whole bunch of bad happened to a lot of players on on Washington over the, the last decade. Their coach was ousted through this. There was a big investigation in the league in general. The good thing is one of the minority owners, Michelle King, who is a very, very rich woman who has a fantastic sense of style. This woman dresses to the nines anytime she's outside her house. I don't know what she dresses like inside. Could be sweatpants, <laughs> could be like $2,000 sweatpants. I don't know. But she is dressed every time you see her. Her hair is done. She has fantastic outfits. But she was able to buy out the previous ownership and now she is the the owner of the Spirit. And nice. it also is rumored that they're going to be going through a rebrand, which is why their kits are just black and white. 
makes yeah. sense. If you're going to rebrand, yeah. why spend the money on some... Why spend the design money? Yeah. yeah. So I'm curious, given Her Fashion, their partnership with like all the league sponsors and all that kind of stuff to see what their kids look like next season. <laughs> you know what? I do appreciate that the NWSL gets a little bit more freedom when it comes to kit design. Yeah. So I yeah, I would be I'd be very interested to see what would come out of this. I do follow a couple spirit fans on Twitter and there is a big push for cherry blossoms on their kits the, and I really hope it happens the for Washington, them, given the DC the DC cherry yeah, blossoms like, yeah. Yeah. There's a big like one of the the folks I follow is just like give it to me and so <laughs> For her sake alone, I want them to have cherry blossoms on their neck kit. <laughs> and so Michelle Kang also isn't wasn't she recently involved with another team too? Yeah, so she just also purchased a large ownership stake in the OL group, who has its hands in OL reign here in the States and OL Femenil and like it's a big conglomerate of soccer. As we know it right now. It seems like a really good deal, but it's kind of complicated. Given, yeah, it, it'd be kind of hard to be owners of of an owner of two teams. So, and, exactly. Yeah, and I thought the oil ring was going to be sold off, or I recently heard that, but every I don't think anything is set in stone as of right now as to like the exact like who's going where and what they're doing. A lot of stuff's rumored. A lot of stuff is very complicated. Still, I'm very curious to see how this all plays out. I believe that. OL group which oversees the European soccer teams is going to be a separate entity from the rain because of that but I don't know all the details they haven't I don't think they know all the details yet but hopefully it just shakes out in a way that's not sketchy yeah let's let's hope and also one of the last things I was able to google was that the spirit are one of the inaugural teams Yeah, that's one of the cool things. I love when we get to play teams that have been there from day one. Same thing goes for any women's league. I'm a Sparks fan for the WNBA, and I was at the first tip-off of the WNBA. So it's very much like, yeah, like we've been here since forever. Yep. And I I think that's important, especially for the fans. Well, just like we were there on the first kick. Yep, I mean, we were also there the first kick for the Challenge Cup, which was down in fullerton there we go yeah Um, so first kick in fullerton first first kick at bmo and or the bank whatever you know where we play (laughs) well i think that is great info i'll totally make myself sound way smarter Uh, the game's going to be on saturday june 10th at 4 p.m pacific time so that's la time la time 4 p.m it will be on Bally SoCal out here in Los Angeles, streaming on Paramount+. Plus. If you are overseas and somehow find this podcast, it'll be on the NWSLsoccer.com also website. Also, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. <laughs> exactly. The Heart Radio streaming online. Or if you want the Spanish podcast, it's on KWKW, which is 1330 AM. You know, I've listened to quite a few on iHeart, and it's really fun. And... You want to know a fun fact about iHeartRadio? Always. Corner Kicks are still sponsored by Cedar sinai Always and forever. I hope that sponsorship never changes. <laughs> well, thank uh, you for coming on this journey with us. Hope you learned something. I know I did. And can't wait to watch the match on Saturday. Yep. Yeah, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe wherever you catch your podcast apple podcast spotify what have you all of the socials we are on at casual fc pod and feel free to dm us if you want to talk about anything in particular bye bye